I wanted to slap him in the face. What I got was a little pat on the cheek. Good evening, everyone. Prince and the Bear here, and we're back at Hollywood Studios because now it's time for winter, fall, fall, winter movie. I don't know when it starts. I'm a Floridian. But as your number one choice in foodie infotainment, Hollywood Brown Derby has new stuff, so we gotta go eat. Remember, she's vegan. I'm not. Let's go get some food. Be sure to enjoy all of the Hollywood. You heard the girl. pomegranate whiskey sour the princess's version as we'll call it uh, our server said something that resonated in my soul for any of my friends that still watch our videos this man told me told us rather crown royal is something you drink when you're in your early 20s jameson sounds like a more adult drink and i couldn't agree more cheers it is objectively better four and a half out of five I'm feeling a fancy bear. Once in a while, I can be fancy even in these signature restaurants. I got an absinthe minded, which is a strong smell of absinthe, that black licorice taste you get with absinthe, some uh, juices, and a little like martini glass. I feel fancy. Now, I'm sure it's not like the absinthe that we've seen in TV, but every once in a while, I like the flavor of absinthe. Yes, the flavor, as strong as it is super tart and like bitter, but it's actually really smooth all the way through. You get that like the hang of the absence of like the top of your mouth. It is a good cocktail. I would not suggest ordering it, however, unless you had absinthe before, because that absinthe flavor is a very strong flavor. Not for everybody. Three and a half out of five bucks. Here we have these beautiful French rolls. Last time we had these rolls was at Boma for dinner, but you can also get them at Tusker and some other buffets. I wish that every location had these specifically because they are vegan. And then we got some beautiful earth balance butter. This time they actually gave me the, the Hawaiian salt or Himalayan salt, my bad. So I'm just gonna put a copious amount on there. Cheers. I wish every buffet had earth balance butter or every restaurant had this combination. This or maybe like that roasted garlic from Yachtsman is the way. If only Yachtsman had these rolls, because their rolls are terrible. I would give this a 4.75 out of 5 breads. This gives really good bread. This is the type of bread you want to brag about to all of your friends and maybe even share. Return of the Brown Derby Rolls. I have said a lot of things about Brown Derby, both good and bad. The one thing here that I can guarantee you that I have never slandered is these rolls. Because they are top tier. You know, classic butter, the Hawaiian sea salt, and a nice, warm, buttery piece of bread. You really can't get any more perfect than that. There's something about getting a piece of bread like that perfectly crisp outside like razor edge level toasted inside perfect fluffy moist warm not undercooked perfectly cooked like that line of being cooked like not overcooked so it's dry not undercooked so it's doughy absolutely perfect every single time here four and a half out of five plus Beautiful chorizo mushroom croquettes. Brown Derby coming in hot with the mushroom options. So many different mushrooms presented so many different ways. 
I feel like this reminds me of like some sort of cross between what I had at Hangar Bar Holiday and what they offer as an advertiser at Citricos. Citricos is Arancini. I say that wrong every time. Let's go ahead and just cut one of these beautiful things open. Very interesting looking treat. Should we call it a treat? It's it's only three of these. This is a six biter. That is incredible. I like that better than Citricos. I like this better than Hangar Bar. I miss the corn soup, but oh my goodness, is this tasty. I was not expecting that. If you guys, if, it, if you guys are new to this channel, I don't like mushroom. So for me to like something this much that contains mushroom is kind of a rarity. I'm obsessed with this. I have to give it a 5 out of 5. This is a Princess City's item. I need more of this in my life. Wow. So good. So, chorizo and dirt room croquette. It's an interesting addition to this menu. This menu, I will give credit what credit is due, is all about seasonal changes. And when they change, it's always something like uniquely different. You don't see a lot of the same meat here. Like from, from different soups, different entrees. Change is something that Hollywood accepts very well while you're in the restaurants. It's like a meme there for a second, like wow. The smoothness of the, the cream combined with the blend of the mushroom and the chorizo gives it like a, like a light earthy note, like not like a dirt room note. And that flavor, the spice of the chorizo, goes down so well. Like that literally whets the appetite. It's a true appetizer. It makes you hungry for more. And it's sad that there's only three. My only note is that there isn't more on the plate. Three does not seem like enough. Nothing enough to share. Like, you're gonna order this appetizer, or it's for you. Don't order this one for the table. Don't let them have any. Trust me, you'll be upset if you have to share it to the table of two or three people. 4.75 out of 5. Here we have the beet burrata. Nice, fresh mozzarella with beets, granola, pumpkin seeds, all out in a nice little spread. That cheesy goodness. Is there any cheese better than fresh mozzarella? Don't answer that because I'm just gonna think you're wrong anyway. You get some pumpkin seeds out here, some of that granola. Get up some of this sauce. Because we're here to have appetites. But you know, if you don't subscribe, the princess is gonna bar me from eating cheese. So you should come give her likes, subscribe to Viper. Let me keep eating cheese on camera. It's some good fresh beef. Murata is amazing. I lose something in the sauce. Like it's covered up by the strength of the beet in both the burrata. So the sauce doesn't really add a whole lot to me. So the pumpkin seeds and granola are really just background crunch. Nothing else because of the other strong flavors. It's nice appetizing. It's my mouth like moist, as they say. But I think Princess is the winner of the appetizer wars today. I would give this three and a half out of five points. But when compared to the bait, the beats at Spacey 20, Spacey 20's beats are better. It's a beat battle, and those beats beat these beats. So here we have the lentil shepherd's pie with some beautiful root vegetables around it, carrot puree across. This lentil pie is slightly taller and thicker than the one that I had the last time we came here. I'm kind of sad because like, it's a lentil pie, it's good, thank you. And I had the Salisbury here twice, and this is my second time having this. But I had the um, tomato risotto with the eggplant fritters only once, and that's the one that I'm still missing. But at least there's lentil shepherd's pie. It's seasoned very well. The lentils are cooked through perfectly. They're not too mushy, not too like crunchy. 
I love the piping on the potatoes. Beautiful technique. You can see each one of these were individually piped like a cake. Gorgeous. Wonderful skill. I do feel like they went a little mild on the flavoring. They could have done with a little bit more seasonings. And I, I truly, in the bottom of my heart, believe that the best shepherd's pie on Disney property is at Raglan. There's really no other place besides Raglan that competes. This is like three steps below Raglan's shepherd that might be. I don't really think it's worth the signature dining price tag, but I do think it's really tasty. So if you want like a nice light option that's lentils, there's no all meat, so I can't complain about that. I would say it's like a 3.75 out of 5 shepherd's pie. I think Bear makes a better lentil shepherd's pie. He's the shepherd's pie master, so he would know. It's delectable looking shepherd's pie. I love the construction of it. Stacking lentils in like a circular form and then getting the mashed potatoes perfect on top is not easy. The one part about making shepherd's pie at home, and I love making shepherd's pie, is that when I take it out of the whatever container I cook it in, it is never pretty. It is an ugly, messy endeavor. Trying to like get it out of like a glass just with a spatula. If you guys have techniques on how you make your shepherd's pie look pretty at home, let me know. I'm always willing to learn something new. Like the flavors of this dish. The little spreads, the carrots, three ways. Reminds me of Epcot. Epcotians. Like Shepherd's Pie. I'm getting a lot of flavor from the lentils. Very little from the potatoes. The potatoes are feeling under seasoned, or like the lentils are feeling perfectly seasoned, which combined makes both feel lesser. I'm getting shepherd's pie from it, but it's like shepherd's pie light. And not like, it's already a lighter fare with the mashed potatoes, not having butter, and then the lentils, but like light on like punch. If I expect shepherd's pie to slap me like an Irishman would. This, it's more like a tight pat on the cheek. 3.75 out of 5. So here we have our famous, not the famous, our famous, but they want to own this. Oh, they do. Famous Cobb salad. Tossed at the table, princess style, but no, it wasn't tossed by princess. It was tossed by Frank. Frank Kastenberg. He did an excellent job. Put them Cuba. together. From Cuba, no less. For our Cuban friends out there in uh, YouTube land. But you have all these electable greens in here. You give the nice chunks of the blue cheese. I added chicken. You can get it without. You can get it vegetarian if you like. They also have shrimp as an option. I decided to go for chicken because this salad has been on the menu for a long time in different iterations. I've never had it. People rave about it. So, things people rave about, I gotta try. Are they always right? No. Am I always right? No. But, we're gonna try this thing. And we're gonna pray for the best. I forgot that there was bacon in it. You know, it's like on the menu, obviously, there's bacon in the top salad. Bacon and turkey and chicken. It's like a three meat top salad with the egg and the funky blue cheese. Now, there's a lot of blue cheese in this. If you don't like blue cheese, you really should be ordering Cobb salad to begin with. But even for a Cobb salad, it's a strong blue cheese flavor. It goes a long way towards making this like an extra creamy salad combined with the dressing. So it's very wet. Like, almost a little bit wetter than I like most of my salad because you lose the crunch in the lettuce. Now, it's a Cobb salad. I wasn't really expecting a whole lot of crunch from Iceberg shredded like this anyway, but I do like a little bit of crunch to come more than just the bacon. The salad itself, the flavor, it's probably the slap I was looking for with my appetizer or the princess from and got it here. Uh, it's a great salad. Best salad I have on property? Probably not. I think I've actually had better salads here. We used to have a strawberry field salad here that I love. Uh, but still a solid entry. Um, we have four out of five qualities. It's probably a little generous, but they're owning it. 
and the presentation's nice. I really don't have any complaints about it being a little bit wet, and that's a preference thing. I'll give you your four. Prime time. 50's prime time is instantly better. You offered me 50's prime time over this salad, I'm gonna knock this on the floor to cat. So here we have the only vegan dessert on the menu, the beautiful chocolate rose. Now something about this rose just gives me Be Our Guest vibes. Maybe it was the old napkins that used to be folded like this. Maybe it was when you used to be able to get quick service lunch and they gave you the little like rose shaped fob things if you pre-ordered your lunch, which I always did. Either way, it's taking me back to Bob. And we're in a signature dining restaurant. Bog is a signature dining restaurant. If you're new to Dis the Disney world, Bog stands for Be Our Guest. So here we are eating of the Beast and Bell, I suppose, vegan style. Because vegan is the only way to vegan. This is a huge bite. I instantly regret this decision, but I commit to my mistake. So cheers to two big bites. Wow. That is better than any brownie I've ever had at Universal. And I'm obsessed with Universal brownies. Vegan ones. OMG. Okay, so my favorite chocolate dessert on Disney property was, up until this moment, the Toledo Avocado Chocolate Mousse. Now, it is this. This is my new obsession. I don't even want to share a singular bite with them. This is a 5 out of 5. This is a princess of these item. This is a chocolate that you need in your life if you are a chocolate person. I am floored at how amazing this is. I just, I have no words. I have no words. Why is the food good here? I usually hate this place. High in the halls of foodie praise, the princesses come here in this, it's laid up. In any way, shape, or form. Um, looks alone, I'm not convinced. Is it slightly rose shaped? Mm, maybe if it was a sand castle. Just saying. But we don't judge based on looks here. We judge based on flava. Flava is king. Go ahead and dig in. I definitely get more brownie than cake. It's on the more dense side, but it's still moist. Get some, some like crunchy bits in there, they'll sneak up on you. Maybe hit you in the teeth. The flavor is okay. Is it in the same hall as the fabled chocolate avocado mousse from Toledo? I think not. I don't even think they're in the same building. And if they are in the same building, they're definitely not on the same floor. This is probably like floor two or three. Toledo is literally on the roof. It's good. Toledo good? Press X to doubt. I think it's okay. But I feel as if I've had better desserts put service to the park. My own barest opinion. I give it 2.75 out of 5. Holland Brown Derby, I say is a mixed bag. I like it. I like it. I think it's like, I mean, it's the only signature dining restaurant at Hollywood Studios, so it's in its own category. I feel like you have better options. Period. I, there are Period. better options, but if you want signature dining, it's either Hollywood Brown Derby or this secret elevator to Club 33. She's gonna keep mentioning Club 33 like it's some Easter egg, thinking that she, we're gonna go eventually? Probably not. It's only 15K a year. Only 15K Let's do a that. year. More, more Easter eggs. I don't know what you guys think. Like, where does 50's Primetime rank on sort of like your priority of food to eat here? Are you trying to make a 50's Primetime reservation? Do you want something quicker? Is this a signature dining that ranks on your list of signature dinings in all of Walt Disney World that you gotta visit? So is it routine for you? Are we making 50's Primetime reservation? Or are we making a Hollywood Brown Derby reservation? Hollywood Brown Derby. Where does that rank on your list of signature dining? Like, is it all of Walt Disney World? Is this like, you want something quicker when you come here? Like, I need to know. 
Like, where does it rank for you? Like, is it the history? Is it the tradition? Let us know. Maybe my view on the food is a bit biased. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong on this one. I'll be wrong if I'm any wrong. Let the community tell me. As your number one choice of food infotainment, if you guys tell us, we go. If there's anything else you want to see us do, of course, the comments are a place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to stay warm, even though it's very rare when it's cold here. But stay warm and like this video. And if you don't comment, Barry will eat himself into Michigan. Why Michigan? Don't send Bear to Michigan because it's cold here. Chicago? Would you rather Chicago? Yeah, I mean, no. they're all, they're all Michigan. cold. Michigan. Michigan. You heard yes. the girl.